This video is to introduce you to the Atari Background Builder, the finest browser-based uh, tool for constructing background graphics for your Atari 2600 game or other project. Um, if you want a 48 pixel splash screen mini kernel for your Atari basic or assembly game, we can do that. Uh, if you want to get all the bits properly flipped for your you know, regular play field assembly background, we got that. Uh, it handles importing existing images. It does lots of stuff. And for each of the modes that it has, which you kind of see listed here, um, it actually can generate ready to run code. So you can go straight from your editor um, to source code uh, to running on an Atari emulator uh, almost instantly. So uh, at its heart, it's a basic graphic editor. Um, so it has the basic pen tool um, it, ha it can do lines, it can do rectangles. It's very sophisticated in how it handles colors. As you may know, the Atari doesn't let you kind of pick the color for any given pixel. It does it more on scan lines usually. So what happens here is this shows you the Atari colors and their codes, and then you kind of draw over which area you want to be that new color. And that's a pretty good way of getting to, uh, all the colors that the Atari offers and is pretty akin to how you'd actually have to do this in a real game. If you ever want to get a previous color, you can just use the eyedropper tool to, uh, to pluck that color back up. It handles NTSC and PAL modes. As you may know, they handle colors differently. So if you want your game to work in different countries, you might want to be aware of that. Uh, proud of the gradient tool that you can set the start color and you kind of set the end color and it gives you a single gradient and you can draw with a line that will then fill in those particular colors. Um, I'm going to maybe use a, uh, a softer gradient here, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of fewer colors. So, you know, you can do these kind of big blocky changes or you can do, you know, more tighter things and get some nice color effects going with the gradient tool. The Atari classically has a lot of colors and so that's a great way to take advantage of it. It has a simple text tool uh, still kind of a work in progress, but uh, because it only has the one font, I think, but you can say what you want here, and then uh, you can see it will come and be added to the screen there. And again, just to go over how the color, remind you how the color works, so here, just actually kind of see it a little better, I'm going to uh, paste it with a new color. So there's the color, the gradient text tool. You can also select, an, select a region, um, and then you can either cut it just to remove it. Oops, what did I do wrong that time? Oh, you can cut it. Sorry, you can select it. Uh, I think I hit the wrong one. Hit there, hit cut. Uh, then it automatically goes into paste mode for you and you can paste whatever you want, where you want it. Um, so yeah, so you select, so basically hit select, do a region and then copy or cut it from there and then it automatically goes into paste so you can so you can make multiple copies all over or if you wanted to like shift an area what you would do is use a select tool select the area you wanted to shift um cut it paste it you know in, into the into the correct place so it kind of substitutes for a move tool at the uh, at the same time and again it's only doing the pixels it's not changing the colors one thing to understand is it has um different ink modes. So usually when you start it, uh, as you draw, um, it says, okay, if there's a pixel, if there's no pixel there, I'll start drawing a pixel. But if the pixel is already there, I'll start erasing. That's very convenient to do uses one mouse, uh, but it also has left click and right click for, um, for erasing or drawing respectively. Um, so you can always say, yep, yeah, you want to erase, you want to erase, you want to draw, you want to draw, or you can just say, no, I always want to draw or, oh, I always want to erase. And then you don't even have to think about uh, these other things. Uh, like we said, it um, does a lot of different things um, with its with the kernel mode here. And um, this by default is a 48 pixel uh, uh, player based thing. You know, it uses, it uses the three players kind of twice over to get 48 pixels across. Um, you can do that in color and mono. Uh, you can do the traditional uh, Atari basic play field, which as you know, might know is kind of big and clunky. Um, so, so you can see that it, that it's big and clunky, the pixels. Um, and then you can also do a Batari basic, uh, DPC plus mode, um, 
which uh, gives you a lot more finesse. And actually this one's a little bit different because you can even change the background color independently. Um, so that if I set this here um, and put it and actually change, tell that I'm changing the foreground, you can see that the background and the foreground can, can change separately in this mode because it uses those extra chip goodness. Um, and then we're also going to be building up different assembly language um, uh, code examples, which saves you from having to fiddle with all the bits um, and, and the flippage of that. So like I said, with all of these, um, it automatically, you can just quickly download. So like here for the 48 color pixel, let's put it back to this. Um, so, I'm so I'm gonna download uh, these two files. Now I slightly messed up because um, I already had a file of that name. <laughs> so I'm just gonna uh, delete all the previous ones here. Boom, um, and just download this again. Download as many times as you want. And by the way, everything is local to your browser. Nothing is going on to the server. You can even download the thing from GitHub and um, uh, and just run it locally um, because nothing is actually happening on the server. It's all in your browser. So from here, I'm going to open up my uh, the, the, the basic file. I recommend using Atari Dev Studio as part of Visual Studio Code. It's kind of it's free and it's super easy to use. So I, I download this, uh, hitting the rocket ship, and boom, there is the graphic that we just made. Um, pretty, you know, some slight differences, but you can see that it's pretty faithful to uh, to what we what we asked for here. And that versions like that can run in all the different modes. Um, you can save and load your project. Um, this is one of the newest feature, but it's, but you can just save it, you give it a, give it a file name, um, you can load, and then when I, if I refreshed right now, it kind of clears out where I, where I was, but then I can go here, I can go to choose that file, um, it's right there, boom, and now we're back where we were, and um, we, can, we can do that. Uh, I think one of the coolest features is the image import. So um, here's a, uh, little graphic that I just grabbed off the web kind of randomly. I chose one that was high contrast because when it loads it, it's only loading in black and white. You can color it depending on the mode later, but but it's basically thinking, is this pixel light or dark and adjusting accordingly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say load that in. Now this takes a second because it's actually doing some pretty sophisticated trying to get the contrast right um, and, and take the best bet about what makes it there. And, um, and, so, the, and so there's the face and you can see, uh, it has the uh, it had the colors that we had there before, so I'm actually just going to replace that with a gradient. Um, actually, maybe mess kind of have some fun with that. Um, and then from there, uh, you can actually adjust the contrast, uh, which kind of brings out some different features uh, of her face. Um, and actually, uh, just because of the colors we chose, it's it's a little harder to see what's there. I should probably change this back to uh, the background should be black. And then you can see it's it's a face, um, and then as we adjust the contrast a little, you can see more. Uh, you know, so you, so you might want it. It will take a guess, so it doesn't just come up with a solid white or solid black image. Um, but you can then tweak that so so you get more uh, more pixels uh, in the way you like it. And you can always click here to just invert it, which switches from black to white to white to black. So I guess that's it for now. Um, again, new. Assembly modes will be coming, maybe a few new tools, but I think it's actually a pretty serious tool, even as we speak, for um, uh, for making real Atari code and and the fastest way to get a little project up and running when you just want to see something on the screen. Thanks a lot.